Hello, I'm Libby Simpson. I'm the first director of education. And as a former educator, I am really excited to be hosting this series for Teacher Appreciation Week in 2021. And uh, with the difficult year behind us and all of the amazing work that educators have been doing, I'm really excited to bring some of that work to light and talk to some amazing educators uh, during our video series this week. And today I'm joined by Enrique Arce Loretta, who is our first DOD STEM ambassador. So thank you for chatting with me today, Enrique. Thank you. And so will you tell us uh, a little bit about yourself and where you work and, and what kind of teacher you are? So um, I work in Salt Lake City, Utah at a public urban city um, high school. It's got a bunch of different students there. So we actually magnet in a number of students in high academic levels for the international baccalaureate program. So I'm an IB physics teacher, but I also teach general physics and um, seventh grade uh, science for gifted kids as well. Um, so I get a, a whole range of people that I teach um, at West High School. Uh, I've been doing a first robotics program there for 10 years. And um, yeah, it's a little bit about me and where I'm from. Awesome. So I know quite a bit about the IB program and it is very rigorous. There's lots of hands on. Uh, and so I'm sure this year you have had a lot of challenges with navigating potentially remote learning and uh, in person and kind of going back and forth uh, um, and hybrid potentially. So that is kind of part of what we want to do this year is kind of celebrate those challenges and lift up the invisible work that teachers have been doing. And so um, what are some of the things that that resonate with you about the um, the things that teachers have been having to do this year to make sure that students can be successful in this new challenging changing learning environment? You know, teaching is is this fun career choice now that I think about now I'm reflecting on your question a little more. <laughs> it's one of those it's one of those jobs that you just keep learning all the time. Um, and I think that's what draws me to teaching is that like you're constantly having to learn. And I think what resonates with with me this year is, yeah, teachers always work hard. We always learn a lot from every year that we teach. But um, this year, everybody has had to really uh, reinvent the wheel, um, at least in my school district and really just everywhere. Um, so the thing with me was just like learning to be a virtual teacher this year. And uh, sure, on the one hand, we have to do all of the requirements for the international baccalaureate program and then all the other state requirements and everything. But that's just stuff we do every year. Um, and everybody's just had to do a, a lot of work this year, trying new things, um, failing a lot, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and just and just redoing it and reiterating and trying to become, um, you know, a, a better teacher and learning how to do that. And so I think, um, you know, uh, this last year was we, we've all been undergoing this community trauma, right? Like the whole, everybody's dealing with COVID at all different levels. And so I think that um, this year, you know, we've all won, you know, we've made it through and all the teachers and students, we've all figured out how to deal with this and um, really um, just like power through it. So yeah, I the teachers out there who are doing all that work behind the scenes, you know, I, everybody deserves a high five because it's like uh, just a bunch of extra work and additional things you have to learn and also you're working with that. Um, I mean, I remember like last year, I hadn't thought about this, but it's been a, almost a year since we um, started COVID. And one of the first things we did was like, uh, we delivered lawn signs to the graduating seniors because we had to cancel um, graduation mm -hmm. for them. And I'm sure a lot of teachers all over the United States had similar stories. And I remember going to all the like robot kids houses um, personally, just like we did a special thing just for our robotics um, group of kids that were graduating. And we gave them all like um, special robot things to to have for, the, for as a senior gift. So I, I remember like doing home visits and I'm sure there's like a lot of teachers out there with similar stories of like um, that kind of thing. 
this year we're having graduation though. So like, <laughs> I was like, I was like ex excited at my school anyway to be like, oh, well, I don't have to, you know, I just not like I don't have to do that, but it's like now we have to figure out how to award the kids who did robotics this year, right? So. Exactly. Th uh, those are such great examples. I mean, you touched on so many things that are uh, uh, great connections, you know, to first with celebrating our students and and figuring out the way to celebrate them but then that mindset that you talked about like we've all been through this and yes it was so difficult to get through and we've learned so many new things but now that we're through it we can grow we've had can can have that growth mindset and and potentially take some of those new learned practices into the future which is really exciting and hopefully see maybe some positive changes in education on the other side of it. So, as a, um, you're the DOD STEM ambassador, as I mentioned um, in your introduction. So with that, what role do you see uh, industry and kind of government organizations, um, wh how do, what role do they play in uh, inspiring students in STEM? Yeah, so this past year I've been working with the Department of Defense. Um, cohort. So there's a different teachers from um, different STEM programs uh, like Math Counts and the Tiger Woods Foundation and uh, FIRST Robotics. So all, all of these you know, organizations are supported by the Department of Defense and we all get a teacher representative to meet together and um, sort of work together. From what from what I hear um, that I mean there's great demand in the future for STEM jobs and careers. Um, we we during those meetings we've had like Department of Defense uh, like head ups will come up and say this is how many people we're gonna need to hire in 20 years and this is how many STEM uh, you know college students are graduating every year and it's there's a huge disparity between like number of kids all right I call them kids but <laughs> number of yeah. like qualified uh, applicants right and in those STEM jobs and careers. Um, and there's things that we haven't even thought of in 20 years that don't exist right now. Um, I was thinking about like the moon landing. Uh, I went to a um, Yale recruitment lunch last year and the Yale guy was saying, hey, like when they when they like landed on the moon, they didn't know they were going to do that five or six years before they did it. They just they got they got ready really fast. And so it's not like high school is preparing them to do stuff like land on the moon and that's all just like stuff that is completely uh, innovative and did that those jobs did not exist and the average age for like NASA engineers that got us to the moon was like you know just a few years out of college um so it's kind of interesting to think that like um that will hold true and that the students that are going into these stem careers uh, and jobs is great demand for them um so the department of defense has been very like um, uh, just an industry and government organizations in general have been trying to recruit underrepresented groups to enter these fields um, because we have to like get these numbers up from somewhere and there's a lot of like uh, women who are not going into the fields um, there's a lot of like uh, Hispanic students who are not going into the fields a lot of um, racial and ethnic groups um, low income uh, students who are not going into those groups and so i think the job of industry is really to support and sponsor stem programs that target those underrepresented kids um, and groups to let them go into stem um, one thing that was really interesting was that like department of defense is no longer requiring like a college degree in that field to go into a career um, just because they have so many numbers um, so cyber security is one of these fields where they're like you know um, you don't need to have a computer science degree to go into cybersecurity. You can just uh, be interested and have like um, a STEM pathway that will get you there. Absolutely. I, I love all of that. And thank you for sharing the, the changes that some organizations are making to make different pathways for students to enter the, their, their chosen careers. Because I mean, that's a big misnomer out there, right? That there's only one or two pathways for students to, to enter and whether that's college or career like there is a lot of uh, transferable skills that students are getting from a, a range of places including first that really prepare them you know for those careers and actually make them career ready in a lot of cases right <laughs> 
So yeah. what experiences have you been able to give students in uh, kind of STEM education and preparing them for those careers uh, for the 21st century? Yeah, so I, I do quite a bit of different things um, in both in my classroom and uh, extracurricular wise at my school to help them um, have those opportunities and experiences. Uh, one thing I'm doing with this uh, DOD STEM ambassador is I'm developing and um, actually have already made computational lessons where students are using um, Python, programming in Python in um, an interface called Jupyter Notebooks to solve um, physics problems. Um, so some of my students have gone on and used Jupyter to um, do like sci more open ended science projects. Um, and so they're they're learning computational programming and sort of like having a computational lesson in 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 that. And I think that that is a huge component that we need to focus on in K through 12 education is just more computational learning because there's so many so many jobs coming out in that. Um, I also do extracurricular STEM activities and house those at, at West High. So we do um, a first robotics program where we ha we do a first robotics competition, which is like project based learning um, and uh, sponsors teamwork and all that. And I'm probably and so yeah, we, we provide opportunities to have <laughs> first robotics. Um, we also have um, another uh, STEM competition program that I uh, so I coach. CERN's Beamline for Schools team here. Um, CERN's Beamline for Schools um, competition is like a particle physics competition where students will propose an experiment to be um, conducted in a particle accelerator in Europe. And if their um, project is accepted, then they actually go forth and build the project and experiment and spend a, a, about a, a few weeks in Europe uh, actually doing that. So it's um, something that I've done every year for the past four years. And basically we have like a, a team of students who learns how to do like research science level particle physics. So that's that's kind of fun. Um, and so I like to do kind of different things both in my classroom where they're, you know, doing inquiry based activities and all kinds of fun activities and things like that in addition to like learning physics. But then you also have like you can spend even more time living in a robot room, <laughs> building a robot <laughs> to build you know, make a launcher or do something one year and who knows. Uh, so anyway, but that those are basically the opportunities that I that I have put forth in my my experience. And, you know, there's there's so many, you know, working with the DOD STEM like and learning about all these different organizations that are running these um, events and competitions. I'm always like there's so much uh, teachers can do. There's so much opportunity um, for STEM in in the in the current you know, K through 12 system. Mm -hmm. So it's it's a fun job to do. You know, you have a lot of like, you know, possibilities there. It is. It's it's like a, a best kept secret in education, <laughs> <laughs> but we want more people to be doing STEM and teaching STEM. And so we we don't want to keep it secret. We need to share how much fun it is to, to see uh, students learn with STEM and through STEM. I want to pick up on something that you said uh, about well, you mentioned first, and and then you mentioned the CERN project, and I, that really puts them right at in the world of work, right? They're they're interfacing and they're doing activities that people that are employed in those professions often do sometimes. So, can you maybe give an example of 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 where you've seen some students that you've had that are getting exposed to these real world careers or working with mentors who are in the field get inspired to to move into that direction uh, after high school based on sure what, what you expose them to mm -hmm. yeah I mean I I so I have a job where you can see the results in the future of your work right like I I've been a teacher for ten years and. I kind of keep in touch and sometimes just run into by accident former students and mm -hmm. um, they tell me things like, oh, I'm a doctor now. And I'm like, oh, wow, <laughs> that's amazing. Right. I didn't know. Didn't you graduate last year? How are you a medical doctor? <laughs> you know, so so I have, they're like, I got residency and I'm like, oh, yep. that's great. Uh, how old are you again? Uh, no, but like the um, oh, I, I probably like um, so some examples here would be like a few years ago. Um, 
the captain of the robotics team, um, he he got into one of these Ivy League schools, and and so I thought, oh, maybe he'll get he'll get famous or something one day. But he and so last year he got a job working as an engineer at SpaceX. Uh, he he's an electrical engineer for SpaceX now, so they're helping to build um, the space shuttles that will go to the space rockets, the rockets that will go to Mars, right? And so the and the moon, right? First, so mm -hmm. I don't. And <laughs> He was um, he was very interested in the electric, um, the electrical engineering and stuff that went into the first robot. Uh, so th this was the year aerial assist where they did like the yoga balls and they had to like launch them through trusses. And so he, I remember um, that he was like very involved in the electronics and building of like the uh, autonomous code for that year. And so um, I, yeah, it was like cool to see that happen and. But there's other there's other students as well um, that I don't that aren't like the captain of the team that are just like kind of regular students um, that don't have like the they're not the valedictorian of the school and they go on and become engineers. Um, so there's one student who was like I didn't even think he was like going to become like the next Einstein or anything. Uh, <laughs> I didn't didn't wasn't a great mathematician or anything, but he ended up um going to the university of utah and uh, actually became um a software engineer for machine learning and uh in a robotics laboratory so he's like you know doing robots at the university of utah and like you know artificial intelligence work with them and i don't and it's crazy because i'm like really that guy <laughs> you know like like, <laughs> like that's great and he he told me it was a lot of it was based on his um work with the, an experience and in high school with first robotics. Um, so that was that was I was ex happy to hear that and you know like oh wow that's cool and that that's great that that happens. Um, so I, I will say that that was um, those are kind of like little victories that you can get and you know in in the job and it's just, you know I was I'm very much like a service oriented type of person and um, there's a lot of different kinds of service you can do but this is as a teacher you can really see the results of um, kind of your work over the years and it, so it's very fulfilling in, in many ways. It's both instantaneous fulfillment seeing the kids and students get that light bulb moment and then the stories that you shared too where you hear how you inspired them in middle school or high school and then what they go on to become. I, it's it's the best part of teaching. <laughs> right. um, <laughs> you may have noticed or, or uh, people watching may have noticed um, and I think what you have talked about a lot today is is very relevant. We're celebrating uh, this year the the life uh, of Krista McAuliffe and the release of the the uh, commemorative coin and she had the famous famous quote I touch the future I teach and I think that everything that you've talked about today really embodies that spirit and, and what she meant um, when she said that um, and that that kind of carries on through everything that teachers do uh, every day, all day and pandemic or not, you know, that that is what teachers do. So I thank you for embodying that spirit and sharing your stories with us today and Hope that other teachers are inspired uh, by what you're doing, and um, I appreciate you you taking the time to talk with us. Uh, thanks for having me on. Yeah, absolutely. All right, thank you. Bye bye. Thanks. Bye bye, everybody. All right, thanks, Libby.